Today we're going to look at dihybrid crosses as they relate to corn because we've got a nice little lab that goes along with corn genetics. So what we know of corn, the fresh sweet corn that we get in the store, is actually recessive for two traits and that is color and sugar content. So we have, um, you can see in the picture, color for a dominant um, corn kernel of corn is actually, they call it purple. I know it looks like a dark black color. And then uh, recessive is yellow. And sugar content, generally the dominant is a starchy kernel, so it keeps the kernels puffed up. Whereas what we like to eat when it's fresh is a sugary kernel, which kind of like a raisin, when you dehydrate it, it wrinkles up. So we're using lowercase letters to represent these recessive traits. And you can see that the heterozygous F1 generation offspring are all showing the dominant traits, both the purple color and the starchy sugar or carbohydrate content. So how do we get from these parental genotypes to the things that we put on the outside of a Punnett square, which would represent their gametes? Well, for the homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive parents, it's pretty easy. But in all cases, we're looking at two different traits. And so the gametes are going to have two different traits represented in each gamete. So each gamete will show one allele for each trait. And so for the homozygous parents, all the gametes for the homozygous dominant have a homozygous R that's dominant, or sorry, an R that's dominant and a sugar content that's dominant. And the recessive, all the gametes are going to be little r, little su. For the heterozygous, it helps me to think about the chromosomes. So you have two chromosomes in that parent, one with a big R and one with a little r. You have two chromosomes in that parent, one with a big su and one with a little su. And then we start to divide that up and so we could have dominant for both traits, we could have recessive for both traits, or we could have these gametes that represent the recessive of one trait and the dominant of the other trait. And so all four of those gamete options are going to go on the outside of the Punnett square. So here we've got our Punnett square all set up and ready for a dihybrid cross. And so we're going to take those gametes that we figured out from before. Both of these parents are heterozygous, so they're going to need four options across the top and across the side. If you had a homozygous dominant parent for one of the options, or a homozygous recessive parent for one of the options, you may not need as many boxes to represent the probability. But here we go. So we add our four options across the top and across the side, and now we're going to take a look. I like to take one letter at a time and work down and then work across, and I start with all the dominant um, letters. And so I would take the R and fill it down and across, take this R and work across, now take the little R's and work down, little r's work across, so I've completed that r trait. Now I'm going to fill in the su trait, so starting with the dominant and working down, then working across with the dominant, then working down with the recessive, and working across with the recessive. All right, so now I have all my traits filled in. I can look at which ones have the dominant R? I'm using a color-coded highlighter here. Um, and then dominant S. And so you can kind of see a pattern emerging. Now we want to relate that pattern to our ratios. So I'm going to get the blank set up for that. So first I'm going to count everything that's dominant for both traits. So that's 9. Then I'm going to count everything that's just the dominant R, just the dominant S, and recessive for everything. And there is our 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So looking back at the picture from the beginning, you can see the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio here. And they've also, instead of um, writing out 
purple and starchy or purple and sugary. They kind of wrote the genotypes, only they added those blanks. And so that represents all the ones with at least one dominant R, at least one dominant SU. So that's a really clever way of doing that. Um, it's easier than writing out purple or sugary. Um, but of course, you'll see questions written in all kinds of ways by all kinds of um, people that have trained in genetics at different time periods under different kind of like norms. So, so trying to expose you to a little bit of everything. That's it. So good luck with that lab. Uh, email me if you've got any questions.